Okay, say it with me. I want more peace in my life, less anxiety, and more confidence in God's promises. So if you struggle with that last part, like me, the confidence in God, you have to try out the blessings jar. Like I've been using mine for the last three years and it honestly has led to like way less worry for me, which in turn equals way less stress for me. But the key is you gotta use it the right way. You have to use every tip that I share in this video because like the vision board, so many people do it and they just don't follow through all the way and it ends up being a fail. So stay tuned, I'm going to give you the top tips for how to use a blessings jar and have it change your life, literally. Since New Year's Eve is coming up, it's an ongoing tradition for me to open my blessings jar and kind of just see like what God has blessed me with this year. The way it works is every time you find yourself saying, wow, like, yo, God, thank you so much. Whenever you find yourself feeling extremely grateful like that, you literally pull out a piece of paper and you can just cut up pieces of paper like this right write it down the blessing and then drop it in this jar okay that is how the blessings jar works you can make it a tradition like me and open it at the end of the year that's honestly really beautiful to see because half the things in here i forget if you think about the 12 months in a year you're gonna forget things that happen but it also really comes in handy when you're just feeling down and really doubtful about life or, or maybe something that god's promised you or that you've been praying for, you know, is it gonna happen? Is it gonna come through? Um, despite how many blessings we've experienced in life, and this goes for me too, I still forget and I still get doubtful. But in those moments, I pull this out and I'll literally just be reading one after the other, after the other, and I'll be like, oh shoot, that happened. Oh yeah, I totally forgot that happened. Oh wow, that happened in the moment where it really seemed hopeless. And it, that's the part that works wonders for just you and your peace, period. So here's how you do it. Okay, so this really isn't that complicated. It's pretty simple. First off, you need to get a clear jar. Get something pretty or cute or just something that matches with the design in your house that you're gonna be proud to put out in public. It has to be in a space where you see it every day. Trust me, actually, unfortunately, this happened to me this year when I had it away like on a little um, side table on the bottom shelf where it was out of my eyesight, I don't see it every day, I forgot to write the blessings, jar, the blessings down. And nothing sucks more than when you get to the end of the year and you're like, I know way more than this happened. Or even worse, you forget the good things that happened and you feel like all that's in this jar is all that you've been blessed with. And make sure your paper looks nice, you know? Like I like to cut them up nicely so that they look good. <laughs> when I'm looking at them, you know, if you want to do colors, you can do colors, like be my guest, but go with something that is visually appealing to the eye and to you. Add things to this jar. It will not work if you do not add things. There's paper ready to be written on, blank paper already cut. Because for me, if I have to do additional tasks, it's not going to happen. And once again, it can be anything that you're grateful for. It could be something major, like for me, finding this apartment, down to something little like I don't know, an a, a, a argument that ended well, <laughs> you know, with a family member. Maybe you thought it was going to be horrible, but it actually had like a pleasant ending to it. Down to like, I don't know, you got a shipment early. Anything that makes you say like, oh, thank you, yes, 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 yes. Write that down and put it in here. Okay, the next part, when to use the blessings jar. New Year's Eve is a great time. Honestly, I really love having the tradition. Trust me, it leaves you feeling so good good but what a great way to start the new year and feel really optimistic about what's to come another time is anytime you're feeling doubtful if you're feeling hopeless if something a situation of some sort that you've been praying for working hard at just looks really hopeless or even like a, a, a smidge of hopeless is the hopelessness is there um just open it up and and start to take out the blessings and let it remind you how god's come through so many times for you that works wonders. This is literally taking me out of a horrible funk, <laughs> opening this up. And then another way to use it that a lot of people don't, including myself, is just when you're feeling grateful. You know, when you're feeling grateful and thankful um, to God for the, the, the things that have happened in your life, it just amplifies the grand feeling that you're having at that moment. And that too 
is an incredible feeling honestly it makes you want to go that much harder especially if you're working on something and you're like feeling blessed that this came through and that came through and then you read this and you're like oh yeah this is the stuff that god's done for me so those are the main things that are going to help you like really make this work and i promise you it's life changing it's game changing and really i want you guys to know like it's not this object that is life changing it's really just creating a space of extreme gratitude where you have that connection time with god and you realize all that he's done for you and in turn it empowers you and makes you remember that he's got your back he's never gonna like leave you hanging so this new year's eve is coming and this is like a tradition that i do i kind of want to read some of my best blessings usually share it on um instagram funny enough but i thought i would share it here with you guys but i wrote the longest uh story about just me finding this apartment i mean it was a long search it really seemed hopeless i had a very uh low budget some refer to it as unreasonable budget for the things that I wanted. I wanted close, uh, a close walk to the train. I wanted to have a nice big space that I was comfortable with, um, a one bedroom, not a studio. Uh, I just, I, I wanted a lot. And it's interesting because a friend of mine um, just kept saying like, yo, God got you. He, he would never give you the least. He would give you the very best. And I heard her and I like, I, I, I know that. It's crazy because when you know things, but then for some reason in here, it don't really feel like that's the case, right? It just took a lot of obedience from me with God. When I don't, when the faith isn't there, I just, and he's showing me to do something, I listen. So he told me, don't search in the fall, search in the spring, which everybody knows that's when everyone else is searching. So I'm like, what, I, what? How's it supposed to work, Jesus? But I was like, okay, you are very clearly telling me that. When people are suggesting look in the fall, I feel the conviction that said, nah, nah, so it didn't. There were a couple of apartments that I was like, okay, this is decent for my, my super low budget. This is decent. This could work. Instantly, God, nah, nah. Okay, what do you want to bless me with? So on my way back from seeing this apartment that pretty much looked like, y'all remember that scene out of um, Coming to America where he sees his first apartment before he uses it up? He used to rent it to a blind man. Damn shame what they did to that dog. Yeah, it's basically that. We'll give it a few notches up from that, minus the rats, minus the tape, and just a little better. I didn't need God to help me know to that. That was disgusting, that apartment. As we're walking back from that place, I'm walking back with my friend who I was living with at the time, and she said, God's telling me we should walk down the street. So I'm like, okay. We walk down the street. As soon as we turn, y'all, the corner, there's a huge sign. Now I'm put the picture up over here that says, you belong here. She said, see, it's a sign from God. And this is the same friend who had the extreme, utmost confidence in him. But flash forward, it was a sign from God, which made it so beautiful. And here I am living in something that is way better than I could have ever imagined. The space is way bigger than anything I was looking at. Um, the landlord experience with the super and the landlord has been awesome. It has so much sunlight, which all the other places didn't. And it is just a beautiful space. And on top of that, I am currently in the process of decorating it, interior design. And Jesus bless me with a brand partnership that is going to take care of that, the furniture and the design and everything. So when I tell you God comes through, do you understand this needed to be in my blessing star, y'all? My other big blessing of the year, for those of you who attended the Do You Know Your Rights tour that I did, it was a virtual event. Thank you for coming out. I really appreciate it. You know, with all of this stupidity that was going on this year, has been going on for a while, especially with George Floyd's death, you know, a lot of us felt, when I say a lot of us, I mean black people, <laughs> kind of felt a little hopeless, very emotional, and it was kind of like, okay, how can I do my part? And so I'll keep it all the way real. This is a story for another time, but the first thing God told me to do, I did not listen. I did not listen at all, but he so, posed so much grace because he gave me an opportunity, another opportunity to do something. And so when I was planning this event that basically educated people on their rights, I knew that I wanted to have civil rights lawyers. What God showed me was to reach out to the lawyers for Ahmaud Arbery, uh, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd. And I'm like, they are busy. They're in the min middle of a um, case right now. They are not going to say yes to me. I am not, it's not like I'm doing this event with Essence or Buzzfeed or some big outlet, you know, but God was like, just reach out to them. And I have just reached a place where I'm just like, you say it, 
I don't get it, but I'm going to do it. And if I can tell y'all something right now, like seriously, when God says do something, you know, if you have spent time with him ongoing, you'll start to hear his voice. And it takes spending time with him just the same way it does for any person. You can't get to know me without spending time with me, me Chazzy, you know? But as you hear him, if you can hear him telling you things to do and things not to do and, and it doesn't make sense or it seems random, don't worry about that, just do it. Cause he blows me away when I do it and I listen. So flash forward this event, I ended up getting those lawyers and a really great lawyer, um, Charles Coleman, from New York who's been seen on CNN, um, Huffington Post, a bunch of different outlets and they were so amazing. The event was dope. Then on top of that, and it was a great turnout, that's the other thing too. Initially like promotion and, and signups were slow. And so I was like, ah, I think we need to cancel this event. And God was like, no, again. And I was like, Jesus, not a lot of people are signing up. And when I tell you, like I had influencers promoting this event for me, like the collective reach was over 2 million. And I wasn't getting a lot of signups. So I'm like, what? Like, I feel like that's a clear indication that this is not going to go well. But then God showed me, it's not about you. And I was like, note taken. So the blessing in that is that the event ended up being great. 500 plus people showed up. But not only that, when he said it was not about me, I ended up getting a gig to work with Complex during this. And I ended up pitching this as an episode to them. And so we made it an episode of a show on Complex, which ended up having a reach of like, who knows what, like what, over 300K? Like, I don't know, on all across all their platforms, at the, at the least probably, right? Yo, 300K, 300K, do you understand? If I had canceled the event, none of that would have happened. Then on top of that, I miss communications that uh, heads Hot 97 and WVLS reached out to me for Circle of Sisters, a convention that usually brings out over 18,000 people. They wanted me to do the Do You Know Your Rights event um, at their conference this year. And so that was a blessing. It can be the little things like, I gave someone a present and they really enjoyed it. It was just like nothing major, you know, but like they really enjoyed it. And that went in my blessings jar. I had a conversation with someone and you know, I really thought it was gonna go horribly. And it, you know, usually I like to pray before those type of situations and I ask God to lead my words and he has yet to let me down. I added that to my blessing jar. You know, I'm doing this influencer content creator stuff now, but I just, it was so hard to find legit information on how to pitch to brands and you know, how much to charge. I lost my job in May and God showed me this group coaching opportunity came about um, with Sidewalker Daily, and I'll link them below because they have ongoing group coaches, I think monthly or uh, every other month. And they offered this wonderful deal at the start of COVID, and I was able to take advantage of it. Then God just started showing me all these other platforms um, and resources for expanding my knowledge. And so I was grateful for that because, you know, he gave me an opportunity to free up my schedule and focus on something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've been really wanting to build a platform where I can share information and encouragement and the knowledge that I have and the life hacks with my friends and like community. And so now I'm able to do that. But the end goal, if you have not heard me say it yet, is to build a community where I can share my future films, my future TV series without the pressure of having to pitch it to a network in order to get it to eyes because everything will have a message. That is why I'm here on this earth. My purpose is to encourage people. So that's a major life hack. If you are struggling with anxiety as I do, I struggle with anxiety a lot. I have anxiety a lot. I just, and, and people watching this will probably be surprised like you, you never show because I distance myself from people when I need to collect myself. And that's really what works best for me, me going to spending time with God and, you know, not being around people. So I take it out on them. But if you struggle with that and doubt the things that God can do, you have to try, just try the blessings jar. Obviously it's not a sale. It's nothing I'm selling. I'm not selling the jar, but I'm telling you, this is a major, major high, uh, life hack, but you have to follow every single thing that I said. And really it's just like two to three notes. So keep those in mind, do it, see how it changes your life. And I know some people will look at it and be like, nah, I'm good, I'll pass. But if everything that you've been doing to this moment has not worked, give it a try. You have nothing to lose. And I say that about God as well in Jesus. Like if everything you've tried to this moment has not worked, give it a try because you don't know 
So it's the same way you wouldn't know if a product is good until you try it. You can't look at it and figure out if it's good. Like if you have no knowledge of it whatsoever, you know, and how this industry works and whatnot. If that was helpful and encouraging, I'm a video producer who lives in New York City. I'm sharing my journey on this YouTube channel and share videos every other week with life hacks, just things that I learned along the way that have made my journey easier and I'm hoping that it'll expedite yours. So definitely click the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell. And if you haven't checked out a video, any of my videos yet, you might as well. I'm going to actually tag some videos right here. So go ahead, click them. You might as well. And also comment below and let me know what you thought about if you'll be getting the blessing star. And you know what? I'll go ahead and tag a um, really cool gratitude jar that I saw at Oprah post. Um, it's like 50 bucks, but it's beautiful. You don't need to spend that much. This was $10. But if you're looking for something fancy and you are fancy and money ain't a thing to you, then go ahead and check it out. It'll be in my description. Bye, y'all.